So we used to think that uh, cancer was primarily a genetic-based disease, and in the past few years and even the past decade, we've learned that epigenetics also plays a really important role. When I started my career, uh, the biologist and the experimentalist was really the person who was in complete control of the experiment. They designed the experiment and they uh, performed the experiments, interpreted the data, analyzed it, and wrote it up and were first author. And what I've seen over the course of my career with these high throughput technologies now being responsible for or able to generate huge volumes of data at, a, at, at reasonable cost, uh, the experimentalist is less important on many large-scale studies than they used to be, and the person who has uh, skill sets in data analysis, computation, and, uh, and programming uh, are becoming really key to a lot of these large-scale studies. So we've made tremendous technical advances in the past decade in epigenetics. We were nowhere a decade ago, really, and uh, now we're full-fledged partners in genomic characterizations in uh, the Human Epigenome Project, uh, the uh, Cancer Genome Atlas, and, and a variety of, of different uh, consortia, the International Human Epigenome Consortium. So we've made tremendous technological advances, but we're not, we're not finished. We need to be able to process for large numbers of samples. If you look at the various technologies that are available right now on the commercial landscape and, and in private protocols, you can see that some techniques really excel at large numbers of samples. Others really excel at covering the entire epigenome, whether it's uh, the methylome or histone modifications or other aspects of the epigenome. But we don't have technologies that allow us to do thousands of samples at the very highest resolution. The other area that we really need uh, increased uh, technological investment and development is to, to go smaller, to go to single cells. And the reason for that is if you look at a human body, 10 to the 13, 14 cells or something like that, for the most part, they all have exactly the same genome. So it doesn't really matter which one you grab. You can look at the genome and understand it, and, and you know the genetic composition of that person. Every one of those cells, though, has its own unique epigenome. And uh, when we take a tissue sample, a tumor sample, for example, uh, and grind it up and analyze it for DNA methylation profiles, we're really looking at a mixture of millions of cells with uh, many, some of which have vastly diverse epigenomes. So what we really need is the ability to go in and look at individual single cells and characterize the whole epigenome. So epigenetics offers a, a tremendous opportunity for uh, clinical diagnostics in several different respects. Uh, one is uh, the subtype classification and uh, designing panels that identify specific subtypes of disease. Another is to do a more supervised approach where you have a drug in mind and you look specifically at whether particular epigenetic profiles respond better to a, a, a certain drug or not, and that work is ongoing. And uh, the third is in diagnostics is really sensitive detection, so detecting disease in biopsies or in blood samples or urine samples, uh, the presence of disease in the body by looking at abnormal DNA methylation in uh, bodily fluids or biopsies. And, uh, that is also very much an active area of research. There are now clinical products on the market uh, that uh, are designed to, uh, to detect cancer. And it doesn't just have to be for population-based screening. You could also imagine that this would be useful for monitoring disease after the surgeon has resected the tumor uh, to uh, see whether or not you can catch recurrence at an earlier time point and then switch drugs that the patient might be on or um, or provide a, an additional surgical or other uh, radiation or, or a chemotherapeutic intervention. So um, I, I, as I said, there's a really a wealth of opportunity there uh, for epigenomics and, uh, and epigenomic profiling. And we're just really in the infancy of whole-scale profiling of epigenomic changes, both the DNA methylation as well as histone modifications, nucleosomal positioning, um, non-coding RNAs, and uh, the next few years promise to be very exciting.